morning! Welcome to Koi Art Cafe! So I don't like long intros, so let's just jump right into it. Here are 7 tips that I learned to have a successful artist alley. Yes, so number one, a key to your success is to make convention research. So you need to know what kind of events that you'd like to apply to and decipher whether or not it's worth attending. Yes, so you need to look at what kind of events that you're applying to, such as is it a convention, is it a craft fair, is it a festival, etc, etc. And you need to know where your art stands. So know yourself as an artist, what do you draw best and see if you have an audience at these events. Yes, so when you're researching them, typically artist alley applications open at least three to six months, even a whole year before an event even occurs. So you need to be very early about your artist alley applications. Yes, if you do miss a deadline, don't be afraid to eat to email the coordinator because sometimes there's cancellations, there's mishaps, and they might be able to squeeze you in. <laughs> yes, so when you're looking at events, you need to know when are the dates? Is it on a weekend or is it on a weekday? Typically, weekends tend to be a little bit busier since people are off work on those days. Yes, as well as you need to know uh, what are the table fees and what are you getting for the table fee? So typically table fees can range between like 50 to 400 dollars at least around here in North Carolina Also, what are you getting from that table fee? So are you getting an 8 foot huge table, 10 by 10 booth, or maybe a 6 foot standard table or maybe even smaller? Um, does that package include badges for your friends to help you out? Uh, does that include food or how long are the hours? Speaking of hours, um, typically if an event doesn't have food, people are going to leave around lunchtime to grab something to bite. Yes, so you need to look at whether the event serves food themselves or at least if there's restaurants nearby because otherwise the convention center is going to be empty around 12, 2 o'clock typically. Yes. Now let me check my f uh, notes here. Also, what is the average footage at the event? So, does it typically only have about 100 people and less? Or does it have between 5,000, 10,000 guests, 25,000 to 30,000 guests? Yes, so for me, my criteria for knowing whether or not an artist alley is worth it for me is I typically look for something that's local in my state because I do travel with my family, so I try not to make the commute too long. I try to avoid flights right now until I get more experience, so something that has a short commute. I'm also trying not to invest in hotels, so something that's close by. I also prefer weekends because that's when people are typically free. And I also look for events that have at minimum around 5,000 people or more. I also see the ticket prices and see if the children are free because kids probably make about 70% of my sales. I have a very happy-go-lucky style that tends to appeal to younger people. Also, um, is the table fee worth the location? So, if you have like a $300 table fee for a very desolate area that has no people walking around, I probably wouldn't recommend it. But if it's in like a big city and there's a lot of walk-ins or maybe it's a free fee for some people, that might be more worth it for you. Also, um, I'd recommend looking at uh, what your convention friends have said about the event. So check out Facebook pages, look at your um, artist friends' social media pages and see what they said about some conventions to see if it's worth it. Yes, so step one is do your convention research. Alright, number two is to apply to events and get accepted. So typically there are different ways that you can apply. Most likely on these Artist Alley websites, they have like a forum or survey that you can fill out. And there's, I believe from what I've seen, about two different types of Artist Alley applications. Uh, one is first come first serve, pretty self-explanatory. The earlier you apply and the earliest you can make that payment, your spot's already secured. And the other type, I think it's called jury. I believe where they kind of judge um, whether or not your booth and your art style will be a good fit for their event. So when it's a jury event, you need to have a good portfolio for the um, event coordinators to look at. Personally, I think a website is a little bit more professional than a social media page. I think these coordinators prefer a website so they're not scrolling through your Instagram and your Twitter. Yes, so some tips to help you get accepted, I'm looking at my notes, 
is to have high quality photos of your work. So if you're already making buttons or prints, take really nice pictures of those and put them in your portfolio. Also have descriptions of your products, but not just basic descriptions like I sell buttons. Instead, go a little bit more into detail about what your art is about, such as I sell decorative pins that represent popular Japanese culture icons and characters. Yes, I think those will definitely help your applications. Also, don't be afraid. If you miss an application deadline, uh, what I actually did was I emailed some of the people from their website just to contact and see, hey, do you have any more space left? And that's actually how I got into the Fayetteville Comic Con. I was like a last minute add-on. Uh, luckily, I was already preparing for events after that one, so I had enough time to prepare. So don't be afraid to just contact people and see if there's space for you. Because sometimes it's just a matter of they filled up with everybody and they can't accept any more artists and somebody might cancel. Or if you do get rejected, don't take it to heart. Most likely it's just because um, the Artist Alley applications are so competitive and maybe there was an artist that had a similar style to you or they have a lot of this kind of art style already. Yes, so if you do get rejected, trust me, there are plenty of events to apply to. I think out of maybe the first 30 events that I applied to, I got accepted to maybe like five or six. So you really just gotta keep trying and eventually you're gonna get somewhere. Yes, so step two is to apply and get accepted to an event. Step number three is to create a budget for yourself. So you're going to an artist alley, of course, to sell your art, make new friends, network with other artists, but if you're gonna be investing into your products and into the table fee, you're gonna to wanna to make a profit, right? So you need to have a reasonable budget for every all of your expenses. Yes, so the first expense you should definitely look into is your travel expenses. So if you're driving to the event, you need to calculate things like gas or flying, you know, your flights. If you're staying at a hotel, you need to calculate that in as well. So definitely look at the distance of the con to where you live. Also look at food costs. So uh, convention food can be very expensive. So I highly recommend as an artist um, to pack your own lunch and bring your own snacks to save a little bit of money. Cause you know, you're there to uh, make money, not spend it. <laughs> yes, so I actually would always pack my lunches at every artist alley, bring my own snacks and candy and a little tote bag, and it generally sustained me for the whole day. Yes, as well as uh, the second expense that you should look into is your display items. Now this includes your table fee, your tablecloth, um, your organization, so are you putting your artwork on grid cubes, any banners, promotional items, yes. And you also need to look at how much are you investing into your artwork? Are you keeping it simple with prints? Those are typically cheaper. Are you just selling art prints? Are you selling buttons, plushies, charms? You need to calculate exactly how much it costs you to make all of those. And for doing this budget, it's just your bare minimum that you need to make back to break even. And anything you make more than that budget will be your profit. So create a reasonable budget. Now, I'm assuming most of you guys probably seen my um, convention prep video. And I showed you the prices of like my jewelry rack and my banner. And when you calculate everything, it was quite a lot. But I knew that I was gonna attend more artist alleys and reuse these items so I don't have to invest in them again. Now, some of you have mentioned that you don't have the money to you know, invest so much into decorations, pretty stuff. I wouldn't worry so much about making your booth, you know, beautiful, sparkly, crazy, pink like I did. But, you know, make sure that your artwork is displayed in an appealing way that looks organized and sellable. Yes, so make sure to market yourself, but under a budget. Number four is you need to prepare how you're gonna display your artwork on your table. So one thing I recommend is to practice your table display. Luckily for me, I had like a six foot um, picnic table that I practiced my artwork on. I'll be including it right here. Um, that's where I like put out my tablecloth and I measured everything where I want my prints, where I want my buttons on the table, just to see like which way does it make it look more appealing. Yes, as well as you need to make sure that your prices are gonna be clear. 
Now, time over and over again, customers are going to ask you, how much does this cost? If I buy two, is there a discount? You know, they're going to ask you how much, what's the price? So make it very clear what your pricings are so you don't sound like a broken record. I've been to a couple of artist alleys and I've shopped at some people's booths and I would wait there forever like, okay, but how much does this cost? This is really cute, but where's the price tag? Where's the price list? So have a pricing list. I used a chalkboard. I use these little chalkboard heart clips um, for my pricing, which really helped a lot to clarify my prices. As well as, I recommend getting a cash box, you know, be organized with your finances. Um, you have some, a safe place to keep all of your cash and payments. Uh, for me, I personally didn't invest into a cash box just because I've heard of a lot of like theft at conventions. So what I did was I bought a fanny pack that stayed on my body at all times so I can do cash transactions very quickly and keep my things very secure. Also, I recommend getting a card reader. Because the last thing you want to do is have people interested in your art and realize, oh, I spent all my cash already. <laughs> or, oh, do you take card? And then you have to decline it because you don't have a card reader. Card readers are very affordable. Um, I had the Smoke card reader. It was $19. And it only takes about 2.65% of my transactions. Um, there are other alternatives like Square, which is completely free. They take a higher transaction rating, though, which is why I invested in the Smoke reader. But regardless, make sure you can take card payments as well. Also, um, make sure to bring business cards or something to promote your business, your brand, you know? Have a business card so that they can people know where to contact you, to check out your pages, you know? Or if you don't want to invest in business cards, print out a social media sheet with all of your links, all your social media. So that way, um, even if you do run out of business cards, people can still take pictures of that media sheet for you. You can put it in a nice acrylic stand like I did. You can get it for like $4 at Walmart or I think like maybe $11 on Amazon or so. Just make sure that you package it carefully because my acrylic stand actually broke in my suitcase. I had to get another one. So yes, be careful with that. Also, um, Make sure to bring a booth buddy, you know. This is a part of your display, obviously, but having somebody to sit with at your booth will make your experience so much easier. You'll have someone to talk to when hours get slow. You'll be able to use the restroom <laughs> whenever you want. Um, you know, they can help you when times get a little busier or, you know. So whether you're having a table with somebody or you're bringing a friend or significant other, it just makes the experience much more pleasant. All right, and number five is the fun part, is to prepare your artwork. So I'm assuming you already know what you enjoy making, so that will definitely help you in deciding what you want to sell. For me, I sold a large variety of items. I had large prints, small prints, uh, buttons, resin charms, acrylic charms, resin cups now. <laughs> um, and that's, that's all I can think of at the moment. But yes, have a variety of items that you can sell your artwork on, you know? Um, if you're like mostly a plushie artist or you're mostly like a print artist, you know, this could be a little bit more niche. You can definitely make them work for yourself. What I recommend is when you're preparing your artwork, make sure that you have, you set deadlines for yourself so that you are prepared for your first artist alley. You don't want to have everything come in at the last minute and kind of shuffle to just throw everything on your table. You want to make sure that you're prepared at least a couple of days before the event so you have time to package everything, to practice the display, and that you're more comfortable when you're selling. Yes, what I recommend is um, if it's your first time, I'd recommend um, investing in cheaper items. Now, I don't exactly mean cheaper quality. What I mean is items that are cheaper for you to produce. So those are things like prints. Those usually only cost a couple of cents to make unless you print them at home. Um, buttons, stickers even, <laughs> just small little things here and there to sell your artwork on. If you have a little bit more capital to use, you can invest in things like plushies, um, charms, uh, t-shirts, apparel, and more advanced products. Yes, so I recommend um, as an artist, um, usually I'd say quality over quantity. For this one, you should have quality and quantity, of course, but I realized that having more variety 
and less quantity of items really helps me figure out what's selling and what's not. So for example, if you had like 100 prints, and let's say you only had two designs of 50 prints, that means that you have to <laughs> find 100 people that like those specific two designs. But let's say if you brought 100 prints and you had um, 20 of five designs, then you'll have a lot more variety and you can see um, design one and design four, I sold the most out of, so I should restock on those the next time for my next convention. And print five didn't sell at all, so maybe that one's not gonna do so. So having more um, quantity, like more variety, and less quantity in items will definitely help you figure out what's working and what's not working so much. Yes, so I'm not gonna tell you what you guys to sell because that's completely up to you. You have all that creative freedom to do whatever you want. Yes, so get creative, you know, invent your own product. <laughs> all right, number six, uh, it will be self-care and what to bring. I'm putting these together because they kind of go hand in hand. So yes, make sure that all of your artwork is ready at least a day or two before the convention. Make sure to get enough rest before. I know it's super exciting for me. I have a really hard time sleeping uh, the day before Artist Alley's because I just get so excited. So yes, try to get at least six to eight hours of sleep. Please make sure to shower, you know, keep take care of yourself because convention BO is a real thing, unfortunately. Um, bring your own lunch and snacks because you're going to be sitting there for hours, like 8 to 10 hours. And trust me, it gets boring sometimes. So sometimes being able to munch on things to replenish your energy will definitely help. Make sure to bring water, stay hydrated. Also bring a couple of toiletries to make sure that you stay fresh. So, you know, bring chapstick or lip balm or your lips are gonna get dry. Bring gum or mints to keep your breath fresh. Uh, hand sanitizer, because you're gonna be touching a lot of people's hands when you're giving out your products, touching a lot of cash. You don't wanna get any convention sickness like I did in my first convention, so bring some hand sanitizer. Uh, also bring cough drops because you may or may not lose your voice talking so much at these conventions. Uh, also dress appropriately for the weather. Uh, for me, I've had pretty good experiences at these conventions. I make sure to dress in layers, kind of like this. So like, I'll wear something that's a little bit warmer I can throw on. Um, but let's say it gets hotter in the day, then I might take off a jacket or a sweater. So make sure you wear layers that you're comfortable. If you do bring cosplay, make sure to, or just anything really, uh, make sure to bring ladies extra makeup or even guys, um, any perfume or cologne just to freshen up a bit. You know, bring uh, anything for touch-ups, maybe even a hairbrush if your hair gets snappy like mine does. <laughs> yes, and just make sure that you stay fresh and presentable throughout the day. Also, to add on to what to bring, make sure to charge your phone, charge your card reader, bring extra batteries so your phone doesn't die, any cables that you need, uh, bring extra supplies because you never know when you might need extra scissors, pliers, um, tape, or what are those called, zip ties, if your product does happen to fall. Also, and try, if you can, try to get there early to set up. So if a convention allows you to come the day before, go ahead and go over there and set up your stuff early so you don't have to stress so much the day of the convention. Or if they open an hour or two earlier, try to come as early as you can so that you can take your time, you know, getting your badges, all the information you need, and set up without too much stress. If you come early, a plus is you might be able to talk to some other artists if you have some time. And lastly, number seven is how to be a good salesman. So obviously you want to be welcoming and friendly to everyone. And I know it can be kind of hard for some of us introverts out there. My personality type, I personally like to make people feel at ease and comfortable around me. So it's a little bit easier. Um, but just some quick tips that I've learned from my work working in sales is, uh, you know, try not to be on your phone too much because then you look very disengaged. Most people that are walking by, they don't, want to bother you if you seem busy so try to stay off your phone unless you're using it for pictures or for car transactions try to be engaging and active in a conversation yes try also alternate between standing and sitting you know uh, don't stand up every single time somebody walks by because that's going to intimidate them i assure you and make sure um, that you converse with your customers and also other artists, you know. Ask them how they're doing, you know. Don't shout out at people across from the room because that's 
that's irritating. <laughs> but yes, when people stop by your booth and they're looking at your things and things are kind of silent, a little bit awkward, um, sometimes they feel pressure to leave if you're staring at them. Because if you're sitting here like this, are you going to buy anything? Like that's going to terrify people. So make sure to be welcoming and friendly. Ask them how they're enjoying the event, you know? If they're wearing like an outfit that you really like or a cosplay that you recognize and you like it, compliment them. It might make their day, you know? Ask them if they're enjoying the event and if you're okay with it, encourage them to touch items if you're allowed to. Yes, so some people, they'll just stand up your booth and they'll just kind of peer here and peer there and you know, too shy. But if you said, hey, feel free to touch anything you like, um, that'll get them more interested into interacting with your items, especially if they want a closer look at a charm or a print, you know? Uh, also, let people know if something is handmade. I think people definitely value um, handmade or personalized items, you know? And whether or not they purchase something, thank them for their time, you know? Thank them for stopping by. If they do make a purchase, thank them for their purchase and their support, you know? Be kind, be sweet, and stay professional. Now, there were a couple of times where people can be a little bit flirtatious at a booth. Unfortunately, it happens, but understand that this is your business. This is your storefront and this is your brand. So, you know, keep a polite smile. If people seem to be a little bit like flirty or a bit pushy, just, you know, politely decline in a very professional manner and make sure that if you are interested in somebody, you know, give them your contact later. But yes, um, <laughs> make sure to keep it professional, sweet, and simple. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up my seven tips for a successful artist, Ali. If you have um, confusion about my points, I'll be linking them down here below. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to comment below so I can answer any questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to make more content like this soon. Alright, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!